All right. <clears throat> so this is frostbite. Um, uh, let me finish my last sentence. So this can occur also indoors in cases like in 2018, wherein people with no heat okay, can be exposed to the uh, cold as well. But most cases are outside, correct? So <clears throat> let me finish. The principle is if there's a chance that the frostbitten area or areas of the body can refreeze, meaning let's say you started thawing it, right? So you started uh, putting it in a warm water solution to thaw the frozen body part. If there's a chance in transit that it will refreeze, do not bother beginning or initiating the thawing process. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so don't bother. So make sure once you start thawing that the thawing is not interrupted. Okay, because once you thaw the body part and then re it refreezes somehow, then that, um, just like steak, you know, when you, steak should never really be frozen, right? But if you, let's say, you know, bought steak for, let's say, as a sale and then you bought a few extra and you put it in the freezer, once you thaw it, you should eat it, right? Because if you put it back in the freezer, then the meat is ruined. So same principle here. So if you if you thaw the frozen body part in warm water and then the the body part gets frozen, refrozen in the process, let's say you're still transporting the patient, right? Um, and then during transport, it refreezes, then the patient will lose that limb. There's no chance for it to recover. <laughs> All right, so the... These are the goals of frostbite. So we want to raise the body temperature back to normal. We remove all constrictive clothing to ensure there's adequate circulation. Uh, wet clothing will stay cold, so we remove that as well and then put on dry, warm clothing on the patient. The temperature bath is quite hot, so the temperature of the water can be anywhere between 98.6 to 104 degrees so that's that's hot right not that's not just warm so we we put the body part in this in this bath uh, temperature and oh before we initiate warming this is painful so we need to give what first pain medication and okay. uh... so we give right so we give uh, opioids will be used here because this is very painful we give opioids um <clears throat> try not to you know don't massage okay just put it in that warm water okay no massaging right so this one i meant earlier so once we warm do not allow it to refreeze as much as possible try to try to continue the uh thawing um process Uh, just like burns, so the patient will have blisters like this. We call that hemorrhagic blebs, but these are technically blisters. You know, uh, if we if this was a thermal burn, and uh, watch for other injuries uh, also, because usually, why did the patient get frostbitten in the first place? They were out in the cold for a little too long, or they touched something really cold. Yeah. So who are those people? Usually, they're the homeless, right? right? So they're probably homeless, drunk, or stoned, you know, uh, from drugs. So you'll have other problems as well on top of that. And just like burns, so the patient will have hyperkalemia as well as the uh, tissue cells were destroyed and damaged, right? So here are your... so. You see, it's it's really similar to burn injury management. So the only difference is instead of cooling, we warm the body. But there's still going to be escarotomy okay, for circumferential burns uh, or fasciotomy. Okay? Same thing as burns. Last topic is <clears throat> hypothermia. So this is um, this may occur together with frostbite. Uh, they just separated the management, but really it's the same. Okay, the management will be same. So here are your risk factors. You know, I mentioned being homeless or alcohol uh, makes the patient feel warm, right? 
when they're drinking and then what happens to your sensory perception you lose senses and you just get cold right so you're not aware you feel warm but then there's already <clears throat> you're actually cold and then the, um <clears throat> patient before we know it they're already hypothermic or even frostbitten already so main same manifestations uh, however in management here cuz these patients may go into cardiac arrest <clears throat> um uh the principle here is um we we will extend the CPR the chest compressions um for patients who whose body temperature is um less than 93 so if your patients um nine, uh, 92 or less okay a temperature and you do you're doing cpr we extend it so we meaning the patient is not declared dead until their body temperature is normal does that make sense yes yeah so the way the doctor say Can you explain it explain that sorry well, the doctors say um, you're not dead until you're until you're warm and dead. Does that make sense? You're not dead until you're warm and dead, meaning in a hypothermic state, your cells are actually preserved. So there's a chance that your cells can still be revived. You understand what I'm saying? go on yeah. yeah so so that means if you're in cardiac arrest and you're hypothermic we continue chest compressions beyond uh the normal period okay until your body temperature is normal we continue cpr because you're not technically dead until okay. you're warm and dead so so you're only declared dead if you still don't have any electrical activity and your temperature is at least 96 um, Fahrenheit or, or higher. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so just like in, um, we had a, a temperature, right? A limit uh, for, for cooling. It was, what was the limit where we stopped the cooling? It was 100.4, oh, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So here in, um, I forgot to mention under, so that was for heat stroke, right? Um, for malignant hyperthermia, the temperature limit is slightly higher. We, we go with 102 and then we stop the cooling. Okay. So for heat exhaustion, it was 100.4. For malignant hyperthermia, it was 102. And this one, uh, we warm the patient with, again, the temperature of the water is quite hot, right? We we did uh, for frostbite, it was what? 104 degrees water, 98 to 104 degrees. Um, <clears throat> so this is now our uh, goal is to put the patient up to um, 90, uh, no, sorry, 95. Okay, so there are two types of rewarming here. We have internal and external. <clears throat> so internal, our... Um, Goal is up to 90, then for external, up to 95. All right. Uh, oh, one more thing. Which body part do we heat first? Uh, we should start from the core, meaning the trunk. So we should put the warming measures, um, external warming on the trunk first. Uh, the reason for this is explained here, this after drop thing. Because if we, if let's say the entire person is cold, right? Of course, this is the case. So the patient from head to toe is cold. So as the blood 
uh, circulates, if you warm the extremities first, what will happen to that blood as it reaches the, the trunk, the heart? Cool. If you warm the extremities first. Cold. It will cool again. So it's very counterproductive. So the the guide is to put the patient, uh, the warming things on the trunk first and then the um, the extremities. Okay, so to prevent this phenomenon, this after drop thing, because this thing they said can cause arrhythmias and possibly lead to cardiac arrest. Okay, yeah, yeah, because the 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 cold blood returns to the heart, so you want to warm the uh, the core first. Oh, so this is what I mentioned earlier about doing CPR on a hypothermic patient. That's about it. Then, um, yeah, we, we give oxygen, of course, and the IV fluids. So this is part of internal rewarming. So we, instead of putting ice on the IV bags, obviously we wrap it in um, warm. Okay, so we put... Um, hot water bags around the IV fluid so it's warm as it enters the patient. All right, and then the others are symptomatic. So let's say for the lactic acidosis or metabolic acidosis, we give them sodium bicarb. Uh, they definitely is on, are on a monitor because they typically go into dysrhythmias. What about a tetanus shot? Only if they have a uh, good point in uh, frostbite. So just like burns, so burn patients receive tetanus uh, injection. So this one also same if it's uh, frostbite because there are deep tissue injuries as well. And here, don't forget the early urine output. Okay, because can this patient also go into AKI? Yes. Yes. So you need yes. a catheter as well to monitor urine function. Okay, that's about it for today. I'll see you.